Hello and welcome back to 10 Minute English Lessons with Alex. This is episode number 29. In today's video, we are going to practice listening skills by listening to two old friends bump into each other at the airport. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the thumbs up button. That way you get all the new videos as soon as they come out. Okay guys, without any further ado, let's get over to the classroom and get started. Okay, let's get started with today's lesson. So today we are going to listen to two friends bump into each other at the airport. Now the thing that is really important about today's lesson, because we're practicing a very, very, very important skill in English, and it's called getting the gist. Now what this means is, as a new learner to English, or maybe you've been learning for a while now, there will be times where you might know this word, and this word, and this word, but sometimes if you put those words together uh, in a sentence, the meaning will be completely different. For example, I'm sure most of you know what rain is, and you know what cat is, and you know what a dog is, and if you see those words separate, then you understand. But if someone says to you, oh wow, it's raining cats and dogs, now it's a little different because you understand dogs, you understand cats, and you understand raining. But when you put it together, it's something completely different. Now, even though you might not understand the expression in the beginning, if you listen to the person's conversation and what they're saying, you will get the gist. For example, you're at work and your coworker next to you says to you, Oh my God, Alex, it's raining cats and dogs. It hasn't rained this hard in so long. And I forgot my umbrella. What should I do? Now, the beginning part, it's raining cats and dogs. Maybe you didn't understand that in the beginning, but with the information that came later, you get the gist. Or it means you basically start to understand what that expression or idiom is. So a lot of times when someone is talking to you in English, they might use an expression that you're not familiar with. But instead of stopping that person and saying, hey, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Try listening a little bit longer and you will probably get the gist or become able to understand what they're saying with more information or more context. So one really important listening skill in English and perhaps almost every language is getting the gist of expression or an idiom or a word that you might not know. Just listen a little bit more and the information will probably become clear to you. Now in today's video, we are going to listen to two people bump into each other. Now that expression right there, bump into each other, some of you might have got the gist and, and understand that bump into each other means meet by chance. So we're going to listen to two friends at an airport meet by chance or bump into each other and have a short conversation. I want you to try to listen very clearly to their conversation. And then after, we're gonna break their conversation down sentence by sentence by sentence by sentence. And at the end, I will let you listen to the conversation again. And I think the second time you hear the conversation, it will be so much more clear to you. All right, guys, let's get started with today's video. Hi, Vera. Is that you? What are you doing here? Traveling to somewhere? Oh, hi, Grace. No, I had enough traveling, thank you. Honestly, I just returned from a nightmare trip to Europe. I ate food that was not only terrible, but horribly expensive. I visited boring tourist sites that charged too much to get in, 
and put up with rude waiters and even worse hotel rooms. To top it all off, the airlines lost my luggage. Would you believe this is the third time I've been to the baggage claim department to see if my suitcases have shown up yet? Still, no dice. But when I finally get them back, I'm going to give someone a piece of my mind. Right now, I'm convinced that home is the only place to be. So this is where I'm staying. What about you? Are you headed off to somewhere exotic? To tell you the truth, I'm just returning from somewhere exotic. And my experience is totally opposite from yours. For me, it was a trip of a lifetime. Oh yeah? Where did you go? Well, I've always dreamt of going to Bali. And three weeks ago, I finally went. Truly, I never knew traveling could be so fantastic. Bali? Isn't that an island near the Indian Ocean? Yes, it's an island, but it's more like a tropical paradise. The scenery, the climate, the weather, and the people were unbelievable. And I suppose you're going to tell me that the food was out of this world too. It's true. It really was. Everything was fresh and I've never tasted food that was so uniquely flavored. But most of all, I just fell in love with the people of Bali. They were warm and friendly and had such a rich cultural tradition. I find it exciting to be there and learn new things. You know, if I had the money right now, I'd go back in a minute. Grace, next time you go, please take me with you. Okay, I know that conversation might have been a little fast and a little hard to understand for some of you, but don't worry. We're going to take a look at the same conversation, but now we're going to look at it in writing. I will go over sentence by sentence by sentence, explain everything, and then after we're finished explaining the entire conversation, we will go back one more time and listen to the live conversation. You will be amazed how much better you understand things the second time around. All right, let's get started. So here we have two friends bumping into each other at the airport. Now bumping into each other, like we said before, just means meeting by chance, not plan. You just met somebody by chance. You bumped into them. Now the two ladies that meet are Grace and Vera. That's their names, Grace and Vera. And to start with, Grace says, hi Vera, is that you? What are you doing here? Traveling to somewhere? Now I think that first sentence is pretty easy to understand, so let's move to the second sentence. Oh, hi Grace. No, I've had enough of traveling, thank you. So here, Vera is saying, no, I am not traveling anywhere, and I've had enough of traveling. So this sounds like Vera is very angry or very mad because maybe she traveled a lot recently. The next sentence here, honestly, I've just returned from a nightmare trip to Europe. Now this expression right here, nightmare. Now some of you might know a nightmare is when you have a really bad dream, a really scary dream. But here, a nightmare trip, it's kind of the same thing but basically it means really bad. So a nightmare trip, a really bad trip, or a nightmare dinner, a really bad dinner, or a nightmare job, a really bad job. So here, nightmare just means really bad. So for example, honestly, I've just returned from a really bad trip to Europe is the same thing as I've just returned from a nightmare trip to Europe. Now let's take a look at the second sentence. I ate food that was not only terrible, but horribly expensive. Now this is a, a special um, kind of sentence structure in English, not only. Whenever you use this expression, not only, you have to tell people two or more things. For example, uh, not only do I like chicken, but I like pizza too. Or, not only do I like skiing, 
but I like snowboarding too. So whenever you're going to tell somebody uh, something that's maybe a little surprising, you can say not only first and then tell them two things. So this expression here, I ate food that was not only terrible, but horribly expensive. So she's trying to tell about two things that happened. And a third sentence here, I visited boring tour sites that charge too much to get in and put up with rude waiters and even worse hotel rooms. So here, uh, Vera, she visited really boring, maybe tourist locations, like maybe the beaches or maybe a castle or somewhere that just was very, very boring. And to enter that tourist location, you had to pay a fee. And whenever she went to restaurants, she's saying the waiters were really rude. They were not kind. But the worst thing is the hotel rooms were really bad. So we can see here that Vera did not have a really great vacation trip to Europe, which is why she said she had a nightmare trip to Europe. Now let's take a look at the fourth sentence. To top it all off, the airlines lost my luggage. To top it all off is when you had something really, really bad, like many things really, really bad, or many, many things really, really good. And you're saying the most important thing to top it all off. For example, she had really bad hotel service, the food was expensive, the food did not taste well, the, the tour um, spots, the locations were really boring. The waiters were really bad. But the most important thing, the number one worst thing, is that the airlines lost my bags. So if you want to tell somebody a lot of different things that happen, but at the end, if you want to tell them the most important thing that you really feel maybe angry about or happy about, you can say to top it all off. For example, um, last night I went to an amazing restaurant and I had delicious uh, chicken salad and I had a, a really wonderfully tasting pasta dish with a, a great glass of red wine. But to top it all off, I had an amazing dessert. So probably the dessert was the most delicious, the most important thing. So when, you, when you're listing things, one and two and three, but the most important, when you leave it at the end, you can say to top it all off. And the next one here, would you believe this is the third time I've been to the baggage claim department to see if my suitcases have shown up yet? So here, a baggage claim department is when you're at an airport and whenever your luggage is lost, you have to go to a little office or a little room and ask the airport staff, where is my luggage? Where is my suitcase? That is a baggage claim department. So Vera had to go to this, uh, to this lost luggage department three times because the airline had lost her bag. This next sentence, still no dice, but when I finally get them back, I'm going to give someone a piece of my mind. So this first part here, still no dice. This means you really want something to happen and you've been waiting and you're waiting and waiting, but still that thing has not happened yet. So still no dice means still um, I haven't received my luggage yet. So something has not happened yet. The next part, when I finally get them back, I'm going to give someone a piece of my mind. So when I finally get my luggage back, I'm going to give someone a piece of my mind means I'm going to yell at someone. So when you give someone a piece of your mind, it means you're going to tell somebody something, but you're very, very angry. You're going to give them a piece of your mind. This is only a negative thing. If you ever use this expression, I'm going to give my husband a piece of my mind when I get home, 
It means you are very angry and you're going to yell at your husband when you get home. And the next one, right now I'm convinced that home is the only place to be. So this is where I'm staying. So I'm convinced means I think. So basically right now I think that home is the only place to be. So this is where I'm staying. This just means that because I had such a bad trip, I don't want to go anywhere else. And I think home is the best place to be. What about you? Are you headed off to somewhere exotic? Now, exotic has a lot of different meanings. It means uh, fun, adventurous, um, exciting, thrilling, but a little bit dangerous, a little bit scary at the same time. Now, if you're from some place like maybe Canada or maybe from the US, and if you go somewhere completely different, like Cambodia or Vietnam, and if you leave the hotel and go down those small little, little alleys, those little streets, it's very unusual, it's a little scary, but it's a little fun, and it's foreign. You're not used to it, so it's very exotic. So exotic is something you're not used to, something's a little scary, a little dangerous, but probably really, really fun. So something exotic. Now we move to the next part, which is Grace here. To tell you the truth, I'm just returning from somewhere exotic and my experience is totally opposite from yours. For me, it was the trip of a lifetime. So here, uh, Grace is saying, to be honest, to tell you the truth, I'm just returning from somewhere exotic, somewhere fun, somewhere unusual, somewhere different but probably really exciting. And my experience is totally opposite from Vera's experience. For me, uh, it was a trip of a lifetime. This means um, something that would only happen once in your life. And the next sentence here, oh yeah, where did you go? I think that's pretty easy to follow. Well, I've always dreamt of going to Bali, and three weeks ago, I finally went. Truly, I never knew traveling could be so fantastic. I think that one's a little easy to follow. The next one, Veer here. Bali, isn't that an island near the Indian Ocean? Yes, it's an island, but it's more like a tropical paradise. The scenery, the climate, the weather, and the people were unbelievable. So here, tropical paradise is any like island like Hawaii or maybe Cuba or Jamaica, any very green or very lush or very beautiful island where there's probably a lot of water, a lot of rainfall, with maybe beautiful tropical birds. We call it a tropical paradise. And here she's talking about the view or the scenery. The, the scenery, the view was very beautiful. The climate, which we're talking about the weather. So the weather was probably very warm, maybe about maybe 25 degrees Celsius or maybe 75, uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit for you folks who use Fahrenheit there. Uh, the weather and the people were unbelievable. Here, when you say unbelievable, it's something that's really good. So both the weather and the people were amazing. But you can go to your favorite restaurant and you eat a, a wonderful meal and you could tell your friends, oh, this meal was unbelievable. It just means really, really delicious. And the next part here from Vera, and I suppose you're going to tell me that the food was out of this world too. This expression out of this world means really terrific, really wonderful, really amazing. For example, I went to um, I went to New York City and it was out of this world. The restaurant was amazing. The hotel was beautiful. Uh, the people were really friendly. Out of this world just means something that was really, really wonderful. And here, Grace, it's true. It really was. Everything was fresh and I never tasted food that was so uniquely flavored. 
So uniquely flavored just means very different. Um, if you are from Canada and you go to maybe Korea or Vietnam or maybe if you go to uh, Afghanistan or Turkey or Greece or Paris, whenever you're leaving your country to somewhere completely different, you can say uniquely flavored. It's a very kind way of saying really strange foods or something that you're just not really used to, you can say uniquely flavored. You're not really sure if it's good, you're not really sure if it's bad. It's kind of a safe way uh, to talk about food. For example, if I go to my friend's house for dinner and she prepares a wonderful Mexican meal and there's many foods that I've never seen or tasted, I can say, oh, that food was uniquely flavored. It could be something good or it could be something bad, but it's a very safe way of saying food that is very different from yours. Now the next part here, but most of all, I just fell in love with the people of Bali. They were warm and friendly and had such a rich cultural tradition. I think that one's pretty easy. The, the, the weather was warm, they were friendly, and the culture, the traditions in Bali were really interesting to her. I found it exciting to be there and learn new things. You know, if I had the money right now, I would go back in a minute. This last part, I would go back in a minute. This means um, when you really want to do something bad, you would do it as soon as possible. In this last sentence here by Vera, Grace, next time you go, please take me with you. Okay, so we broke down this whole uh, conversation that these two people, Vera and Grace, had in the hotel. So what I want to do now is go back to the live video, watch it one more time, and then see how much you can pick up and you can understand the second time. Hi, Vera. Is that you? What are you doing here? Traveling to somewhere? Oh, hi, Grace. No, I had enough traveling, thank you. Honestly, I just returned from a nightmare trip to Europe. I ate food that was not only terrible, but horribly expensive. I visited boring tour sites that charged too much to get in and put up with rude waiters and even worse hotel rooms. To top it all off, the airlines lost my luggage. Would you believe this is the third time I've been to the baggage claim department to see if my suitcases have shown up yet? Still, no dice. But when I finally get them back, I'm going to give someone a piece of my mind. Right now, I'm convinced that home is the only place to be. So this is where I'm staying. What about you? Are you headed off to somewhere exotic? To tell you the truth, I'm just returning from somewhere exotic. And my experience is totally opposite from yours. For me, it was a trip of a lifetime. Oh yeah? Where did you go? Well, I've always dreamt of going to Bali. And three weeks ago, I finally went. Truly, I never knew traveling could be so fantastic. Bali? Isn't that an island near the Indian Ocean? Yes, it's an island. But it's more like a tropical paradise. The scenery, the climate, the weather, and the people were unbelievable. And I suppose you're going to tell me that the food was out of this world too. It's true. It really was. Everything was fresh and I've never tasted food that was so uniquely flavored. But most of all, I just fell in love with the people of Bali. They were warm and friendly and had such a rich cultural tradition. I find it exciting to be there and learn new things. You know, if I had the money right now, I'd go back in a minute. Grace, next time you go, please take me with you. Okay guys, I hope you liked today's listening video. I know this conversation might be a little bit difficult to follow the first time, so it is a good idea to maybe watch it a couple times. You can read the subtitles on the bottom when the video is playing. I promise the more times you listen, the easier it will become. If you have any questions, like always, 
put them in the comment section below. Until the next time, aloha.